Ricky Fuller. Oh, oh, really? Well, if you're <laughs> going to steal, that's a good guy to steal it from. Uh, explorer in universe. Okay. <coughs> and bear with me, but um, I can't hear you. What? Can you hear me now? I hear you, darling. Yeah. Okay. In five seconds. Oh, wait a minute. Five seconds from five when? Five seconds you started. I can't hear you. Five seconds from now? Yes. Welcome, welcome very, very much to conversation for a repeat for, uh, 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 vision here on the program. And that's C.T. Fernley. C.J. C.J. Fernley. He's a major intellectual, I'd like to say. He's a, a proponent and uh, admirer, as am I, in the contributions of Buckminster Fuller. And he's up from Philadelphia where he's doing great work with uh, a number of people. We're going to be talking about his take on the human condition, some of the work of the major philosophers and so forth to give some guidance to what's going on comprehensively. We've got two hours that we're going to be able to talk and set things straight in terms of the current human condition. So C. J. J. Welcome to the program again. Thank you, Harold. Did a program a few years back. Yep, four so years ago. Yeah, is that what it was? Anyway, sh uh, share with myself again, if you would, born and raised, a little bit of that ground. Yeah, think? I was uh, born a Trojan in, uh -huh. in Troy, New York. Yeah. And um, grew up in Troy, New York, uh, several years in Mechanicville, attended Mechanicville High School, uh -huh. transferred to uh, Bethlehem Central High School, which is just south of Albany. Oh, upstate. Upstate, yeah. and then I did uh, four years at Binghamton University. In uh, Yeah, what? Bachelor's of Art in Mathematics and Philosophy. Okay, right, yeah. And uh, then I, I didn't know what to do after that, yeah. so uh, Buckminster Fuller had become my hero, and I, I learned that he spent the last decade of his life in Philadelphia, and I took a variation of New York's theme, and I said, if Bucky can make it in Philadelphia, so can I. Yeah. And I took my chances and moved to Philadelphia, and I've been there ever since. Okay, and it was because of Bu B Bucky. Because Bucky spent the last decade. I didn't know where yeah. to go. I, I so didn't have, I, yeah, right. I tell you, and that, that's a great guy. You got Buck, Mr. Yeah. Fuller. I, uh, for me, uh, being older and everything like that and everything, but he's perhaps the, the leading uh, person that has influenced my thinking. Uh, and I'm up the years, you know. But he was just a major figure, yeah. Yes. I was honored to do a program with him once. I've seen that program. Yeah. He'd very, he was wonderful there. Yeah, he was there as he wa is. And his works and contributions, I think, should be taken uh, more seriously by the whole of the American and world society, including its leadership, could learn a great deal of value from uh, his work and what has been going on. And I guess we're both, in a sense, in his debt for the work that he's put forth and understanding of the human condition and some of the issues of the world in which we find ourselves, right? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. we yeah. still don't have any comprehensive, very many comprehensivists. How That's many right. comprehensivists are there? Well, there's you and there's me. <laughs> I sometimes think my dog is a bit of a comprehensivist. Yeah. No, but there. No, I think there's a number. We have a mutual friend, Mr. Zeloff, and there's some yeah. others. They've got the Buckminster Fuller Institute, and he's got a coterie, uh, the Design Science Decade work that yeah. they did at Southern Illinois University. I used to teach there at Southern Illinois, oh. where he worked. That was a major piece of work that they put together. But um, um, that's sort of steering off on somebody that's inspired us both. But back again to your own. Uh, your 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 how l y y you took your work in philosophy and so forth yeah and, and when mathematics did you, when when did you pick up your inclination to really talk seriously or to in Incorporate in your thinking the work of Mr. Fuller. Uh, when I was in college, I yeah. started reading Fuller more and more. Yeah. I I think I had actually purchased Synergetics, yeah. uh, Fuller's Magnum big, Opus, big two yeah. volumes. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. In Apple high school, and and it, it seemed a yeah, little too advanced for me. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll do a degree in mathematics, uh -huh. and then maybe I'll be able to understand it. It turned out the mathematics helped me not a whit. 
Uh, you don't need mathematics to read synergetics. No. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you need to read what synergetics. What you to do mathematics as a, as a uh, your, pri your what, major? Uh, yeah, I, I really loved geometry in high okay. school. Okay, yeah. And Bucky's subtitle in Synergetics, Explorations in the Geometry of Thinking. That's true, yeah. Right. And, and there's a lot of geometry, and I thought that uh, that, that ge would help me. You know, mathematics might help me understand synergetics more. Uh -huh. it, it didn't, but it sent me on my way. Yeah, right. And... Um, when I got to Philadelphia in 1990, right. I, um, I, you know, it took me several years to find my way, but uh, eventually I got into Linux, the Linux computer. That's a computer system or something. It's an alternative to Microsoft and an alternative to Apple. And, um, That's two big things to be alternative to. Maybe we could talk some about that in a minute. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah I, I think it's a fantastic system. It, it's um, very popular now. It's it's on the Android phone uh -huh. and that runs Linux. Yeah. So many people have it, have Linux, even though they don't know it. Really. And uh, if you have an Android, you have Linux. Okay, I don't and, have Android, but and uh, uh, mo most uh, many of the internet sites run Linux. <laughs> the uh, <coughs> um, most reliable websites on the internet typically run Linux. Um, and, and so um, I started organizing um, Linux um, presentations in 1993. To understand the working of this program? And right, and right. You know, how to use it. Yeah. Um, and, and by 1995, I had my first clients. Uh, so I started Clients a to teach them the consulting Linux? career. In Linux? Uh, um, at the time, Linux was one of the best ways to run an internet server. Is it still? Yes. Really? Yes. So I think that we ought to give a, 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 a plug to that then, because that's a major question that uh, everybody's involved with the computer now. I don't know anything about Linux and everything, but you think it's worth taking account of and maybe uh, taking a look at it as a uh, purveyor of work in yeah. with the internet. My father got yeah. so frustrated yeah. with Windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I he put Linux Mint on his own computer. Put Linux, Linux Mint. 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 Linux has many, many flavors, many, oh, many really? varieties. Yeah. And one of the easiest to use, even my dad's elderly, he's in his 70s, yeah. uh, uh, he um, he pay, figure, figured it out himself. Yeah. I didn't even help him. And he just called me up one day and he says, "I've got Linux Mint on my system." And you know, he started asking me questions. What does that he mean? It was Linux a, Mint. It's just the name. Oh, it's a it's a yeah. type of Linux. Yeah, thing. it's a type of Linux. The pe there's some people who are very no a lot of people are not really knowledgeable. Some are really celebrated for being very good businessmen. Know how to get a a a. a, a corner on the market where they can make a lot of money and very successful and all of that. But the people who are the pros in so cybernetics, uh, I don't know who they might be, uh, Ray Kurzweil or some of the other people that are interested in it, would recognize what you're saying as uh, the pros, would recognize that Linux is the way to go if that's it's not too strong? It's or what? the most popular operating system in the world right now. Really? Because it's on Android, it's on uh, most of your websites. Uh, Google mostly runs Linux. Um, so Linux. in terms of number of computers that yeah. run Linux, Linux probably is the most popular in the world right now. That's something amazing. Yeah. I mean, uh, and you, uh, you, you're, an, uh, you're a devotee. Yes. Linux. Yes. And you're a proselytizer for it. I I uh, think it's great stuff. Um, yeah. I think in the modern in a world, systems way, it's really important. Other than the systems that most people are depending upon, it's in, it's infrastructure. I think of it as infrastructure. Yeah. For you and me, you yeah. just use a browser, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, you don't care what's underneath the hood. No, I have a hard time just doing anything, you know. And you can run a Firefox or Google Chrome or Chromium on yeah. Linux, just like you can on any other so computer. So what's the advantage? Or what is the advantage of whatever you use to get the u g ma maximum utility and purpose and good work 
out of using the cyberspace well, that's available to us. Now. Mainly, it's it's um it's open source or free and open source software. Okay. Um, so it's on a, a license where you have to, uh, if you modify it, yeah. and you release those modifications, whoever you um, give it to, y you have to allow them to modify it as well. So it's this uh, cooperative. Um, sharing system. It could be, Claire, it could be from, see, I don't know, seen as sort of anarchical or something. Um, that anarchy, uh, it yeah. will run amok, all kinds of things well, they would say. Um, people who have a lock on something else. Something that has market value. Something remarkable happened. Linux is now the fastest changing operating system. There are more lines of code going into the Linux kernel Mm -hmm. than any other system produced by government or industry ever in the history of humanity. And do you think it's, is it growing? It's growing. It, uh, you know, if you count the number of lines of code added each day. That's one way to do it. Um, guess, yeah. uh, so that, that is a measure of how much interest people have in improving it. Mm -hmm. It beats everything else on the planet. So how might somebody who's using just like me, uh, it has a hard time yeah. getting an email done right. or something like so that. So you would want uh, something like Linux Mint that is designed. Mint, like Mint. Mint like yeah. Mint, M-I-N-T. M-I-N-T, yep. Linux and Mint. Um, Linux Mint is one of the easiest to use. I like You don't easy. have to I know like computing. Yeah, and I don't. It, don't it, you, you install it, and up comes your browser, yeah. and away you go. Uh -huh. um, now, well, that's some, are you listening to this, people out in the audience? That's something It really makes that much sense to you, one who's very carefully understanding the whole Megilla, as they say, right? Yeah. So that's a piece of work, that a piece of information that makes this whole program really, really important uh, to me and to a lot of other people. I thank you for that and your colleagues. Now, are there people who would say that's hogwash and... Uh, is something else is much better than Linux or, you know? Everyone promotes their own. Microsoft yeah. promotes their operating system. Apple promotes theirs. And if you live in a community where Microsoft is gospel or a community where Apple that's is gospel. That's a lot of the world. That's a lot of the world. Then Why? Why is some system better or so much a part of the world than others in the uh, cyber world? I, you know, how does the economy work? I yeah. mean, you know, it's... That's it's a big question. In fact, we're, but we're going to be talking about the economy and everything like that, too, yeah. in this program. And in a certain, in his own way, <coughs> but with a philosophical basis and so forth, so did Mr. Fuller have attention to that. He wasn't just a dreamy idealist or something, uh, not relating to reality. He was relating to realities that were really real. Yeah. Uh, and in meaningful, yeah, like... Yeah. Yeah. So um, with Linux, I yeah. think it's the spontaneous cooperation, that aspect of the world game ethic of Bucky's. Yeah, it sounds like Bucky. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it just, with that cooperative spirit, yeah. it just sort of attracted so much attention that it snowballed. It snowballed to the point where, as I say, now it's yeah. the most rapidly developed uh, people in all sorts of industries or hobbyists or government are saying, here's another feature, here's another piece of hardware, we should support this or that. And so uh, because of that spontaneous cooperation aspect of Linux, yeah. I think that's why it's, it's really taken off in the way it has so that even my father um, in his 70s put it on his system uh, one, of, one of the benefits yeah. over Windows yeah. is viruses. Linux is generally immune from viruses. That's a big issue. Now, yeah. Theoretically, you could have a virus on Linux, yeah. but I've never seen one. Yeah. <laughs> um, and well, why has, all right, let me just ask a question out of the blue then. If it's so good and so advantageous, why isn't it being uh, in a, why isn't it running the world? Um, monopoly oh, okay. powers. Okay. Um, so we're talking about the, inle the intellectual, no, the economic ordering. Yeah. Of things. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. And you know the monopolistic practices of Bill Gates in the 80s and 90s led to a uh, maximization on Windows. 
that um, belies its lack of quality? Well, that you have Andro you have um, you have uh, that you have uh, that uh, what he did, but then you have also what's the other one you have out in Palo Alto and everything? Uh, Apple. Apple. Yeah. And that seems to be the two that everybody talks about or knows about. In yeah. some side. And now everybody's got these little things they carry in their pocket. Everybody's got a smartphone and everything. Right. Does the Linux miss is there, does it? relate to that as well? Just uh, a, a person walking around in the street? L Linux is an operating system. Yeah. So it can run on most hardware, including a smartphone. Uh -huh. um, <coughs> so, and that's <coughs> one of the ways in which it's become the most popular operating system is the Android market share is so large. Uh -huh that that plus internet you know people like me that yeah. use it as their day-to-day -day workstation yeah that's uh, you know linux is not winning that market yeah. because most people still use windows and apple yeah because they got they got a they they, they uh, 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 they've stolen the march as they say yeah. ahead, ahead of things and everything well that that's all very very interesting and everything so when did you first pick up on uh, Mr. Fuller in terms of your own in philosophical... College. Yeah, in yeah. college, I, I started reading Fuller extensively. Why? What brought you to do that? Um, I, I just got a... I don't know. He, he, he sucked me in. <laughs> you didn't see him on television or something or a magic mm, thing? Or no. Something? No, it was from books. Um, I think it was Critical Path that sucked Great me book, in. Yeah. I, I had Synergetics. Yeah. yeah. And Big I'm like, this is, yeah, this is, this is too hard. So I set that aside. Mm, yeah. And then I, I started looking at um, Critical Path. Yeah, and I read yeah. Critical Path and I just, I got to get more did of this stuff. Get, did so it get your dander up for uh, some revolutionary change here now? And then, so <laughs> there you got to start thinking, ma'am, uh, you know, in a new kind of way. That's right. You became a bit of a rebel to the system, would it be fair to say? Uh, and that's part of the reason I got into Linux. Yeah. Because okay. I saw you that as so you uh, see Linux as being something that challenges the basic premises of the system, which is probably a good idea for young people or people in general to give more thought to than they do just buying whatever comes down the pike. And, and even retired people like my dad, mm. if, if you're getting viruses all the time and yeah. it's just too tiring and too much of a pain, yeah. Linux is more secure um, and it work, it's just as easy to use. Okay. And uh, there's no tax going to fund Bill Gates's, you know, private- Do you have a thing against country. Mr. Gates? Um, you know, I, every human is being... He, is he the one that's the richest man? No, it's Bezos now. It's yeah, Bezos now. The richest man now. in the world. So having suddenly got the march. We just lost the contract in New York for uh, Amazon. Yeah. I, I just posted an event I'll be organizing in April in Philadelphia yeah. on um, should we love and value those who have done evil? Evil, now that's a strong word. Yeah. That is a so, strong word, yeah. So yeah. Um, I got into that because of my recent uh, reading of Heidegger. I've been reading Heidegger. Okay, yeah. Heidegger is one of the greatest philosophers of the last century. Okay. He's highly extolled. Yeah. He was also a Nazi. Yeah. And, and I, I said wait to minute, myself... Wait, wait, I, I'm a little bit shaken by that juxtaposition of things. Uh, uh, Great philosopher, Nazi. Yeah, uh, it, it bothered me. Time, uh, my mind has a hard time working in that kind of a... Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, that's why I'm organizing this topic in okay. April on yeah. should we love and value those who have done evil. Oh, okay. And, and so I... That's, okay. Heidegger... Is that a subject for one meeting of this meetup thing you've got? Yeah, to it, this is going to be a two-hour discussion, uh, exploration, on April 22nd at the Philadelphia Ethical Society yeah. near Rittenhouse Square yeah. in Philadelphia. And, um, and I'm, I'm uh, curating it. Yeah. I think of it yeah. as a curation. And you're looking at the question, are you using a term like evil? Yeah. Yeah, you do use the term. I use the well, term get it evil. Out there if you want to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah right, so yeah. so here's Heidegger. Yeah. One of the greatest yeah. philosophers. Right, right, and he right. was in, he, he, in 1933 and 1934, he was a, not just a Nazi, he was a Nazi fanatic. Well, wait a minute, I have a hard time putting these two things together. 
So do I. I didn't have that. I, I didn't know that of Heidegger, right? Yeah, so I had a hard time with it, too. So I found out about Heidegger from a course by Peter Paul Verbeek on the philosophy of don't technology. Know. Oh, Peter on. Paul what? Verbeek oh, is, is a oh. remarkable. He's Ooh. at the University of Twente in the Netherlands. I don't know. And yeah, okay. I really like yeah. Peter Paul Verbeek. I think mm. in some ways he's a philosopher who's rediscovering some of Bucky's ideas. You're telling me something I don't know. I'm yeah. happy to get that. Yeah, so, so might the so audience. Yeah. Peter Paul Peter Verbeek Paul said, yeah, Verbeek. That sounds like a music group, Peter uh, Paul and Mary. <laughs> He's yeah. a yeah. philosopher yeah, and okay. a technologist. He's okay. definitely a technologist, just in like in Bucky. The, and like, for, were they associated with each other? No, no, no. no. Peter Paul Verbeek is young. Um, he, oh, yeah. he only got his PhD in the 2000s, I yeah, think, oh, he's you know, young, so he's, up, yeah. yeah, so, um, but he, you're putting this term Heidegger great in fascism. Well, that's what that, Peter that Paul That sort of be. bothers me somehow. Well, I, so, so it might bother a number of people, I think. It, you know. it should, I, yeah. I would think so. So well, how do we put so evil, I, if that's the way it's seen, So, um, there is philosophy. a lot of testo testimony. Mm -hmm. uh, Christopher Zeloff, who I we love both know. Christopher, dear Christopher friend. Christopher Zeloff dear tells friend. me that Heidegger is the best philosopher. He thinks Does Heidegger he? is wonderful. I've never heard that. And before. and uh, Christopher, give him my best. Yeah, okay, Christopher's yeah. extolling Heidegger. Yeah. Peter Paul Verbeek extols Heidegger. He uh -huh. says he's one of the greatest philosophers. Uh -huh. And Heidegger wrote what this. What makes him great then? Well, he, you know, I've only read one essay of Heidegger's. Um, he wrote an essay, The Question Concerning Technology. Mm. I organized... It's a small matter. Yeah, it's a small I'm matter. I'm making a joke. Yeah. Just what is the essence of technology? Thing. That's Fuller, McLuhan, and everything, yeah. Heidegger mm. looked at what is the essence of technology. Yeah. And just Saturday, I organized a topic to explore that. Mm. And, um, and we got into Heidegger... Um, and, and it, it's remarkable. I, th I, I see tremendous connections between Heidegger's thinking in that essay and Buckminster Fuller's World Game Ethnic and Bucky's The part the connection I have a hard time with is that one with the fascists. With the Nazis. That bothers so, me really seriously. So, yeah. so first we need yeah. to make sure we understand yes, what kind of a uh, Nazi was Heidegger. Yeah. Are there so, different... Okay, yeah, spell it out. So in 1933 and 1934, Whoa. Heidegger was a fanatical Nazi. He uh -huh. thought the Third Reich was the it, right? Uh -huh. And he, in some sense, applied to be the philosopher of the Third Reich. Good grief. And um, he, Heidegger became famous in 1927 when he wrote his famous book, Being and Time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Right, and right, so right, Heidegger right, yeah. was a famous philosopher. Yeah. And one of the things his critics say is he legitimized the Nazi regime by supporting it so strongly in 1933 uh, and 1934. I haven't read no, no, how no, he no. did in it, general, but um, he, now at that time he was the rector at the university. I forget which university Where? he was at, uh, Heidelberg maybe, I'm not sure. Okay. And yeah. um, using his university position, he um, harassed and had fired or dismissed a number of Jews, reporting them to the police and the Gestapo. Well, I, this is getting deeper and deeper. I don't understand where the, uh, I don't want to say admiration. Or well, the admiration comes I, I in his philosophy. That doesn't. Uh, but his philosophy does not have most people. He had a short circuit in there somewhere, it seems to me. Well. I mean. Can you explain that? I can't explain I, that. You know, you'd have you'd have you'd need a psychiatrist to explain that. I, I can't help you there. But what I can say kind of a big thing is that by yeah. the end of thirty four, yeah. he became disenchanted with politics. Wow. And he dropped his uh, position of authority. Yeah. And although he continued to support the Nazi regime, he remained a member of the Nazi party until the day it was dissolved. I'm still having a hard time understanding where the admiration? The admiration comes... What philosophical point was he making that makes him somebody important in your way of seeing things? I 
Well, uh, the only thing I know is his essay, The Question Concerning Technology. Okay, and the yeah, question well, concerning technology, like Bucky, maybe, huh? he, he starts from very humble beginnings. He says, yeah. what is the essence of technology? Yeah. What, is, what is an essence? Yeah, okay. An essence is what a thing is. Yeah. What is it? So what is technology? Mm -hmm. Heide uh, Heidegger says technology is a human activity and it is a means to an end. Mm -hmm. A means to an end involves causality. Mm -hmm. And then through a series of wonderful arguments, he eventually comes to that uh, technology in its essence is a revealing, a truth. And, and he points out that in the Greek, um, knowing, know-how, uh, Sophia. Gnosis or something, yeah. Sophia. Yeah, okay. Um, and and um, so technology is a way of knowing. It's a way of revealing. Uh, through bringing something into appearance, poesis, uh, you reveal something. You know, it was a not yet existing, uh -huh. and now it's here. It's yeah, it's coming in uh, in in incredible rapid uh, dimension. Yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. and and it's so a qu major question confronting mankind. Yeah. So he Heidegger examines this and and he says that that revealing I is a truth. It's a um, uh, in framing. It's a um, it's a ordaining of destiny, he says. Well, those, ordaining these are, these are of destiny. Of that, yeah, okay, right, right. Ordaining yeah. it, it, it lays out a um, ordering. It's an ordering. It doesn't sound of, synergistic to me. Well, um... Behavior systems unpredicted by the sum of the parts. It sounds very exacting. No, let's go to the other Bucky okay. quote, the one about yeah. uh, world ethic and um, that nice we're going we to... Some. Um, uh, change not man, but change the environment. Yeah, change well the environment. Yeah, so yeah, change yeah. the environment yeah. is a revealing. A revealing. It's an ordering. Yeah. It's an ordering as revealing. Yeah, yeah. And and so you get to we destiny. shape our tools, and thereafter uh, they ape us. So, so Bucky said, we're going to reform the environment, and it's going to make the world better. Is that not destining? Destining, yeah. Destining. Yeah. The process of creating our destiny through yeah. technology, through yeah. invention, through a means to an end. So where does that tie into Nazism? It doesn't. His oh, philosophy has, thing. his oh, philosophy is wonderful. Philosophy. Oh, yeah, yeah, his yeah, philosophy yeah, is yeah. wonderful. Uh -huh. Peter Paul Verbeek in his course says, if you see anything fascistic mm. in Heidegger's text, let me know right away. And, and I couldn't has. find anything. Nobody you, has. You, really you know, it, his, he, he, it's like it's a different world. Is it a conundrum? It, it is might a conundrum? Think of, but is there, can you get to some a, a rational understanding of how you uh, come to that conundrum? Uh, I mean, that's an important question. I, I think... Um, Maybe, maybe Bucky can help us. Did Bucky yeah. not say, uh, dare to be naive, sure that, did, yeah. uh, that, we, uh, that I'm a bundle of mistake making? Yeah, right. Um, yeah. A, a bundle of mistake. Yeah, if I'm a bundle of mistake making, so maybe Heidegger made a mistake. Yeah. He also believed in synergy. There the heavier system is unpredicted by the sum of its parts. Some say mm -hmm. maximally engaged. You yeah. know, that idea of synergy. 40% yeah. of our... a major term, synergetic, the book, yeah. Yeah. So uh, Heidegger gets to this destining as revealing. Okay. And, and he says, therein lies the greatest danger, the supreme danger to humanity. Which? Um, destining as revealing. Why is it the supreme danger? It's the supreme danger because... As we see this destiny as yeah. revealing this truth that's revealed itself to us, mm -hmm. we the may be... The yeah. technology. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. We may be we misconstruing all, we, we, it. We honor it now, technology, endlessly. Yeah. But we may be misconstruing it. Yeah, it's a problem. We may be misinterpreting it. It may be that self-driving cars don't work. They don't work in the rain. 
So maybe maybe they're a bad idea. Just it could be the wrong at the uh, at the lab. You know, they say that, Mr. Musk. Uh, well, the if I was trying to raise venture capital for my self-driving car, I'd say that too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, yeah. Well, wait a minute. What about entrepreneurial thing? When I was from Detroit originally, right? So I don't. We want to finish Heidegger. All right, go ahead if you, you want. Know, I was going to try and uh, Heidegger link them. You know. Um. Desti destining as revealing yeah. is the supreme danger. It's the supreme danger because that revealing yeah. that we just had, that's yeah. our new destiny, our technology, you know, Bucky Fuller, our technology destining us to 100, service 100% of humanity, yeah. we may be misinterpreting it. But we it may, we may be wrong. This could be a mistake. It also runs in the face of the term synergy, which is the behavior system unpredictable by the sum of its parts, which one could add maximally engaged. Oh yeah, how, know, that, how that runs counter to the idea that it has a the destiny. The, des the des but we have evolution. It, yeah. It's destining in the sense of yeah, things right. are changing. Yeah, right, right. That's the destining. Mm. The destining is how things change. Well, yeah, and we're here. We got. I got a thing on my chart all about the beginning of the whole universe, from a millions and millions and millions of years down to you know the time in which we live. Do you think we're in a time of qualitative, not quantitative? up the hand. We got 200,000 years. Our species has been yeah. here, if I'm not correct, 10,000 generations. And we're now at a point where we have a tremendous technological capability. I can remember when I was young, um, there was no such thing as television at all yeah. or any of that. Any of that stuff was there. And it just came all very, very quickly. And it's, it's coming very quickly, and now it's going to where all kinds of things are, going, are coming with a tremendous faith in the technology because it's brought so much uh, th that's happened. But um, it, it's, it's happening at in, in, in an exponential pay, pace, and it's coming to the point where you have extreme possibilities that weren't there. We were impotent yeah. at a certain level for good or evil. There used to be so some books written on good and evil and that kind of stuff. So the, the things that are becoming available to us through the, uh, the, the exponential increasing capability yeah. to alter the environment or the outerings of consciousness and so yeah. forth. On one end, you've got weapon systems that have, I don't know if you looked it up or if it's yeah. worth it or if people do look it up or do we ever think about it, but the weapons that exist in the world, yeah. they exist now. They didn't exist except the on the drafting table. Thi this is the supreme ago, danger. They have become, as I understand, I don't know, maybe it's not worth talking about. A lot of people would ignore it, but well. they are in their total capability. There was no capability along those lines at all when I was young. It's got a new capability. And they are in their capability to be the, the tridents, by and large, right. in the American so, fleet. So yeah, they are. But they're species lethal in their uh, capability to wipe out the whole, uh, the whole homo sapien species. And we also have an upper so side of we've got an ability to so take care of everybody in a, in, a, in a living re pattern, to say Bucky, that is also equally important in terms of transcending the ironclad laws of scarcity. For uh, zero sum, for one to win, somebody else has to lose, is still imprinted on the consciousness of this planet and on the, the institutions that are there. And that paradox, could, yeah. that paradox is captured by both Bucky and Heidegger. Okay. Bucky captures it as utopia or oblivion, yeah. and Heidegger captures it as the supreme danger and the saving power. Yeah, I don't Heidegger's know where that saving power so is. Heidegger, where, when you're getting, uh, excuse me, I'm just very innocent. Or so very Heidegger unable to handle things very uh, adroitly when it gets down to things like the Nazis and that. Yeah, well, uh, we'll, we'll get back to the Nazis, yeah. but first let's see what's great about Heidegger. He, what's great about Heidegger is he sees the supreme danger. And as I was saying, the supreme danger is both that you may misconstrue or misinterpret it. Um, and the other element of the supreme danger is as a destining, as a revealing, yeah. we start to see everything in the world as standing reserve. What so that, mean, I don't know what that means. Standing yeah. reserve is like uh, that mountain over there. You know, those, it's those, gorgeous. You know, there are trees. Trident submarine? No, no, mountain. 
a mountain. mountain. You know, it's gorgeous. Not a piece there are of tree, technology no, no. or the human mind extension, no. Or brain. Let me, let me go okay, on. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. There's a uh, mountain over there. It's gorgeous. Yeah. There are trees. Yeah. It's rocks. It's, yeah. You know, we could hike there. We might put up a ski lodge. Yeah. But no, someone discovers coal, so we strip mine it. Um, well, strip mining was a way to do it at a profit. Yeah, well, and, and so, and we, so we, we, we see that mountain as standing system. reserve yeah. for our power plant. Or maybe we see it as standing reserve for the ski industry. Or maybe we see it as standing reserve for uh, a national park. You know, I mean, yeah. there's a choice there, yeah, right? Right, right? And that's what Heidegger is pointing out. He's pointing yeah, out right. that um, the way we tend to see things through technology, when we're looking at things, a means to an end, which end are we going for? Are we going to turn that mountain into a power plant? Are we going to turn it into a recreational facility or, or preserve it for, well, for I, its nature? With all due respect, I think on the other equation or the other thing, I think the really one of the moment is this idea that was put forth by Fuller. And he, he came up to a year, 1970, he was saying, it was a yeah. chart of the percentage of the world population that can realistically be seen to be what we call a have, in materialistic yeah. terms, has been increasing just exponentially almost as we come into the 20th century. It's like, a, it's like coming yeah. to the end of but, a process but, but that's 200,000 years long. We're coming to an end of that process in some sort of a qualitative transformation. Well, let, let's look at it philosophically in the abstract. Okay. Um, from that perspective, we have, uh, Heidegger calls it, a granting of destining as revealing. I think Bo Fuller, Fuller doesn't say granting of destiny. I don't know destiny. Sounds like destiny. Destiny. Think of it as evolution. Destiny. No. I well. Wait a minute. I don't know what the word destiny means. Well, destiny de is the um, is gerund not, for not, destiny. Yeah. Okay. Destiny. But destiny has a quality to it that's uh, intrinsic. Um, Fuller's is uh, behavior systems unpredicted uh, by the sum of the but, parts maximally engaged. But when you turn destiny into a gerund mm. as an ing, yeah. it's the verb of how destiny reveals and manifests itself. Uh -huh. So it's like evolution. Well, evolution is part of something we are. And, and you can also think of evolution as a destiny. Yeah, and right. It's a 200,000 year destiny that we have as a species. But and we're coming to the end, though. Well, it's a destiny that we have choices in. Mm -hmm. We can interpret that mountain in many ways. We can interpret it as reserved for our uh, coal plant. Oh, you're talking about we can, the mountain. Yeah, okay, we, yeah. Can, we can interpret it as a recreational facility for our ski industry. We could interpret it as a... Um, a secluded place to preserve nature, to um, uh, you know, absorb a carbon. Yeah, we have and, national parks. And, and yeah. National parks. Yeah. It could be a Roosevelt. a resource in Roosevelt. of beauty and enjoyment for millions. I'm so you know, yes. There's a possibility there, of, of many possibilities. Or we can yeah. send in the strip miners mm -hmm. and tear it down and and haul well, off the yeah. coal and burn it. Yeah. You know, there are many things we can do. And that's our, our grant, our choice, for destining as revealing, mm -hmm. um, or as Bucky would say, mm -hmm. uh, our, our technological choice for environment control to uh, change the environment instead of change man. Yeah, right. And, and, yeah, and so there's that, yeah. that choice, and that, that is the saving power according to Heidegger, that this choice is the saving power. We have that choice if we can avoid the danger. We, we, okay, we say we, <coughs> if I'm in, you and I are talking about we, 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 we're well, here, we start, we're talking to everybody. Over there. No, but everybody's different than we. And we happens to be people who are at the levers of power of a system that's put in no, place, no. built upon the assumption, just like Galileo said it was the flat earth, uh, or he said, you know, that, that kind of thing. They, they hung him for saying something that nobody wanted to hear. But, but everybody in their lives has choices about how to treat the 
natural resources available to them. No, I don't think there's a similarity there, you know. I think there's many, many different views of it. And also, if it was 100, 100 years ago, we would have been protected in our impotence and our incapability of doing anything like what we have the capability of now, much less being able to stop this whole evolution of consciousness called Homo sapiens. The existential threat. That was threat. never there. That was never there. There would always be survivors. The species would survive. And the, the, the system would be. But what they did believe in that, because it was uh, scarce in the sense that there, there, was, uh, there wasn't nearly enough for everyone to be what would be called, let's just say extend, and I don't want to, I don't want to miscalculate, misquote Mr. Fuller at all. He's fantastic. But the idea of what it means, what it means to be, in terms of internal consciousness and all the things that go with it, to be in a general sense, in terms of your spirit, yourself, and also the material reality of the world, to be what they call a have. Security, a door you can lock hot water, the simple things that are there for make up for a sense of security or haveness. And it was that that he said we had more than, uh, we, we crossed the line where there were more at the level of capability, not the existing, right? But at the level of capability, we crossed that line about 1970, that we had the ability where we could see the way in which we didn't have to live with zero sum uh, uh, assumptions where for one to win somebody else had to lose that's still in the saddle of the america of the world political condition that is existing and, and the individual choice the each individual has the choice of how to you know you can put in a uh, more energy efficient refrigerator or not you you know we each have choices for, uh, that we can do to make climate change, uh, mitigate climate change. We can, we, can, we uh, can walk to the grocery store instead of driving. Well, that's a lot of inconvenience. I don't, think, well, I don't like no. things where you have to walk. Uh, if you want to ride, if you want to go on a, a motorcycle, you should be able to. If you want to go, not that you're in, made yeah. to do something in order to fit into something. I don't like that. I don't but think, how are I you think gonna you're going to have a world where people can do what it is they want to do. Sure, but yeah. you, don't you want to get some exercise and get some fresh air into your lungs? Well, not necessarily. No, no, no. It's, well, it's a, it's a, it's a, the point being is that things change over time, and there's something unique about 200,000 years, that 10,000 generations. We're a generation, you and I, more or less. Or, you know, we're kind of there. So that's a lot of generations, more or less, 20 years or something like that. This is the defining generation, Mr. Fuller says. Not in a simple term about one political party yeah. or one thought or some sort of thought or doing that, uh, you know, uh, well, uh, walking rather than not or singing Valdery. I got stuck on Mount McKinley one time with a rainstorm and everything. I just didn't want to hear anything from Mother Nature ever. It was terrible. I thought I was going to perish up on top of Mount McKinley and yeah. my mind set in. I don't trust Mother Nature, you know. Right. I, I really yeah, don't. Yeah, you need good. Uh, you need a good tent. <laughs> yeah, no, you need a good house. People <laughs> need a house, and they need food, and they need these kind of. And we had not been able to have a p capability of uh, transportation. We didn't have a way to do that to provide it. We now have crossed the line where there is enough for all to be able to become and see within the context of what's in place a have. Now, you need a definition of what does it mean to be a have. Yeah. Okay. And, and you need to, dis yeah. And, but and we there, never there may could have given it any consideration any time until now. Yeah. This is the time. This isn't another just moment of history. And that maybe, we can maybe that's things. what Heidegger was getting at because he was writing in 1950. Well, actually, I think the essay was 1949, but it came out in 1954. Mm. And, um, He's looking at this existential crisis of the nuclear weapon. He mentions that in the essay. And thermo, 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 hydrogen, yeah. not yeah. just atomic. Well, when we in, got there. In, remember, we bombed Hiroshima. I, I, that, when did the yeah. hydrogen bomb come in? Was that? Well, I don't know, in the 50s. It uh, yeah, it, so it was another Heidegger, advance. This is in 1954. Terms of a weapon system so that realpolitik, which is yeah. what rules the world, whoever's got the club, 
can hit the other on the head, en enslave them, turn them into serfs, turn them into slaves, and so forth, and that's the history of the yeah. world. Now that's one of the supreme dangers in, he in Heidegger's thinking is that well, we I'm can become Anybody enslaved. Anybody who admired Hitler gives me a reason to think of a lot of danger. I can't, yeah, I well, can't get my mind around that. Uh, he he yeah. was... But I know you're doing with subtlety. So yeah. that's why in April I'm yeah. organizing this good, good topic idea. on yeah, should yeah, we... Yeah love and value people who have done evil. Mm -hmm. and, and Heidegger is my example, my example of my, my sort of uh, moral crisis. Yeah. Should I listen and pay attention to Heidegger um, or not? And, and I think... Well, he's worth it. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think he's worth it. His philosophy well, has you inspired you're, many. You're, you're, you're locked up in the, in the, in the galaboot. In the, what do you say? In the in calaboos? Is that the prison Booth? jail? No, oh. Calaboose is out oh. in the West. The Calaboose. You know, out in the 19th century. Cal and okay. you're locked up, you got your choice. You can't, you can't have one. You've got to either have Heidegger or you've got to have Fuller. Who would you rather have to read? I, I, or to consider or to think about, you know? Um, or maybe that's not fair. Yeah, I mean, we need lots of ideas. Uh, do we? Uh, yeah, but what I'm trying to get at really is are, are we coming to a time not of quantitative change, qualitative evolutionary change it happens in evolution all the time they get a steady state for th millions of years and then there's yeah. something quickening it's like a pregnant but it's uh, an it's anthropomorphic but it's 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 getting a, a quickening quickening and then there's a change so it's a original speed we may be transcending our how, how does that come about well i don't know it's a synergistic thing uh, from, a, from a Heidegger model, okay. it would be our choice uh, controls the destining. Our choices control the destiny. I don't and quite understand destiny. Our, our choices control the evolution. You know, what, what's going to happen? Well, that's mostly they, uh, it's an assumption of the systems out of history as inevitable. Yeah. Like the, the Galileo. And that's what Bucky... They didn't like him saying we weren't the center of the universe. It really messed people up. It was true. Yeah. It well, was true, but they didn't like it and they killed him. Okay? Uh, the, no, uh, yeah. uh, Galileo wasn't killed. He was imprisoned. Well, he was treated very badly. Yeah. No, he wasn't killed. Yeah, no. I thought he was. Okay, I'm sorry. Not Galileo. Okay. I don't think okay, so. Okay, okay, fine. Fine. Yeah. Fine with it. But the uh, point is he was treated badly. Yeah, and and there there was a clash of ideas mm -hmm. at that time. Yeah, as um, there always is. And and the historical judgment is still not uh finished. Uh I I would submit that um, the Copernican Galilean uh quote unquote revolution was really just a change in perspective. The Ptolemaic system is precisely and exactly what you get when you take the telescope eye's view yeah. of the universe. Mm. And why wouldn't you take the telescope eye's view? Well, it would be nice that to wouldn't be, wouldn't that be the most objective view, the view from the telescope? It'd be nice and to have a telescope to be able to take it with. Well, and which was the thing that developed. And we, do, that and we developed, developed an automobile, and we developed a locomotive, and we developed, uh, you know, self-driving cars. And yeah. companies like Amazon to deliver it right to your door, everything you want, convenient, yeah. and so uh, I, a better life. I think Bucky also Material said that we have a choice. It's a choice of utopia or oblivion. We have to choose well. That's a serious question, yeah. And, and I think that's what Heidegger is no, okay. okay. saying okay. in well, his, his, his essay yeah. also. Yeah. Um, he uses more gerunds. No, Fuller likes the gerund also. Yeah, the gerund is a yeah. great form of, you know, adding the ing yeah. to turn a noun into a verb, yeah. into a uh, process, yeah. so that you stop seeing it as a noun, yeah. and you start seeing it as a verb. Yeah. You know, Bucky had I that. I seem to be a verb. I seem to be a I, verb. I seem to be a verb. And it's the universe saying, is yeah. a verb. Yeah. It, it's mm. changing, and yeah. it, it's destining. It's, mm. it's evolving. Well, you I'm know, there are worried about destiny because behavior of system is unpredicted by the sum of its parts. If, let's suppose we have a maximally engaged humanity. Everybody's contributing. You ever do, you, you do music, don't you? No, no you're I, not a I'm music? not. No, you I'm never not. jam? No, you I don't jam. You ever jam with guys? 
No. You ever go, you go and you jam, so, and the guy's going, you got like this. I had a friend, Ornette Coleman, great jazz artist, right? Yeah. And everything. And the thing is, you're jamming, if you're jamming, and you're going, and it's a thing, and you, you go, boop, 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 and it's okay. That's okay. You got it. Oh, it's really groovy, really groovy. And it goes, boop, 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 and then one car, car guy goes along, boop, 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 and all of a sudden, boop, 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 and it's progress. They made a new breakthrough, okay? And it's not just fixed uh, a reality that is what people want to be comfortable with. And the fixed reality now is an unjust system for the vast majority of the population of the world. We have the capability of that no longer being the case. If we could make the right uh, 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 assumptions, but we're caught up like Galileo, as a, a criticism, in an old system that's in place, including realpolitik, whoever's got the club can rule. That's the way it is with the kings and the political system put up. And vast of the people are like serfs on a feudal estate. That's the way it has to be that way. And people just assume it has to be. Now, if we've got a capability where people can all be a have, you don't have to suffer those things that you had to do, slavery and so forth you're going to be able to have a, a liberation out of history. Then you've got the stuff where you're in a, like in a jam session, you get to a new thing. Synergy is like uh, the behavior of systems unpredicted by the sum of the parts maximally engaged. And like a jam session, you hit it. If you're in the jazz mode of thinking, you go and you get, that's what w is the, the possibility. That's before. We have a possibility of making the world uh, um, just in the full sense of the word, maybe achieving a new movement, a new way of being in universe. It's called speciation. We're coming to the end of something 200,000 years long. People are still bound up with the premises coming out of that history, but it's not. There's a new era coming. You understand? We're, yeah. we're in that period now. Yeah. And the challenge is how do we create it? And, well, and one, mm -hmm. the first thing you need to do is understand how evolution, destiny, uh, change happens. Yeah. And, and there's a... Well, there's, there's a lot a, of I I a scholarships going into that, too. There, there's and a, the outering of new technologies that makes for change. And, and that's both a philosophical question. Yes. It's a question of what, does, what is know-how, what is knowledge, what do we know, and, and it's a question of what do, do we know how to use what we know to make the change that maybe we want. We don't see, and, and I don't see it coming, do you? Uh, do you see any sign that the world is getting just? The world is not just in the, in the, in the aggregate. Well, it, it, it never has claim, been. Never, <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying. Um, not, oh no, it's not only it hasn't been, it has to be not just. That's the thing, that's, the, that's called zero sum. For one to win, somebody else has to lose. Everybody knows they're not nearly enough, never can be. You can't have everybody being on their own, having what it is that they need or want or something like that. It's impossible. Never has been, never can be, so that's the end of the story. In the thinking of most people who are seeing the contemporary moment. Uh, that's why we need to think about spontaneous cooperation. Yeah. And okay, there's a good. lot of spontaneous cooperation in the world. Um, okay, well, I guess. It, it, you know, and... Yeah. There are some authors who say that in, in many measures, the world has become less violent over the last few centuries. And, well, and yeah. so there, there's some progress. And, you know, but it's, it's always well, one step forward, two steps back, it Wait seems. A uh, know. Two steps forward, one step back. That'd you know, be better, wouldn't it? It wouldn't be. Yeah. yeah. It's a small little matter, but we ought to get it down to which is that we're living in now. And Are you worried about blowing the whole thing up? Uh, I mean, they, they, they go off. Like now, the politics, that and the money's all in a few hands. That's a And everybody's trying to get their own. They want something more and more and more, everything, and they don't have a way of providing it for everybody because they think yeah. it can't be done. These are serious problems. And nobody brings up the question, maybe but there is enough if we get to form capital in a way where it's going to be able to be supportive of everybody so rather I, than a few. I think what we need is we, we need uh, comprehensiveness. Yes. We don't have enough. How well, can we, how can we get more comprehensivists? 
Well, I would say one thing that would be good to do is to um, cotton on, as they say up in Harlem or something. I, I, cotton on to Mr. Fuller would be a good beginning and cotton a lot of on. other good people and people that are thinking and then assuming it and everything and then l and, and taking stock of the reality in which we find ourselves. Right Not yeah. to just, but it isn't enough and just to, to say if only the Democrats <laughs> would or the socialists and would or something like that. You to know. practice. The regular way of which history has been going, there's got to be a kind of understanding that is something new, something yeah. new and possibly emerging. But it also comes from know how. Okay. So you need to learn something. And uh, the first organization I formed in Philadelphia was the Linux Users Group. Yeah, I heard you say and, about that. Yeah, and I the want to look uh, that Linux up, yeah. Users Group. You can send me um, some literature. About yeah, that. I can. Would you? Yeah, it. sure. Right. And the Linux. As soon as you get home. The Uni Linux Users Group uh, is a forum for people who are interested to. You know, the way I learned Linux yeah. is I gave a presentation on it every month. Okay. And so at the Linux Certainly Users does. Group, we yeah. invite people to give presentations on what they've learned last month. What, okay. what did you learn last month? What did and, you learn in school? And then, um, although I didn't start the Greater Philadelphia Thinking Society, that was started by Michael Tweed in 2007. I got involved in 2000. Yeah. And since then, I've organized. Well, you got to 2000. Uh, He's 2007. It sounds like you. 2010, I'm sorry. Oh, I, 2010. Thought, oh, I thought Thank I, you for catching me. Sorry, I didn't mean to catch you. My thing. tongue That's fell off. That's a minor <laughs> thing. That's a minor. That <laughs> kind of thing you can overlook. Yeah. Uh, and. Um, I've now though, organized. Those kind of things. I've organized 149 explorations, yeah. uh, curated them, uh, and and They're I in engage Philly. in Philly. Philly yeah, yes, and and I engage people yeah. to think about yeah. uh, topics. So that uh, we got two minutes. Two so minutes. Oh, um, okay. So I engage people to, to for topics so that they can explore know-how and knowledge and how the universe works mm -hmm. so that we're in a position to uh, s make the right choices on these existential uh, threats and, and problems that Heidegger and Bucky both talked about so eloquently. I have to do some more reading of Heidegger because I don't see him being, I, okay, I, I haven't, gotten into the, him the, much, like I really Fuller is like a, a, a god. Fuller is a god yeah. and um, I'm reading this, read this essay. I read it three times. I read it in depth very yeah. carefully. Yeah, I, I got paid I can see you have the yeah. question concerning technology by Martin Heidegger. There are copies available online, mm -hmm. uh, PDFs. Um, I, I if you find my event at the Greater Philadelphia Thinking Society I have uh, a bunch of questions yeah. to guide the reader through the essay. Well, if you've picked out the way in which you want to really understand in a psychologically understandable way a man who supported the Nazis, you picked yourself up a really tough you know, yeah. business. Well, yeah. Well, we, we also, some people like pr uh, President Trump, some people hate him, yeah, some right. people yeah. like Hillary Clinton, some yeah. people hate her, yeah. and, and I think we should find love and value in all people, even those who have done evil. Shall we sing? All you need is love. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Thank you, John Lennon. Thank you. Looks like we've run out of time for this particular program. Good talking. We got to keep talking like this. We've got yeah. another hour, everybody. Once uh, we're in the audience, we're going to come back with this young man. And uh, happy to have been able to press C.J. Fernley, a major fellow up from Philadelphia with a lot of interesting thinking. We'll be coming back with more. Uh, in another session following this one. Thanks for viewing. Uh, thanks for all that. And we, we've got a lot. We've only, we've not yet begun to talk, CJ. CJ, right. is that it? Yep. CJ, you got like it. Something out of a, a movie down in Texas or something. Yeah, well, I feel like we completed CJ. the Heidegger Fuller connection well, that I, I wanted I to address. Well, I wouldn't want to see them in similar. Okay, I, uh, maybe I got something to learn. Okay, thank you, everyone. We'll be coming back again. Okay, I